and welcome to Broken Entertainment, and today we're going to cover a little bit of George R. R. Martin news, and kind of, I want to talk about a, an author's responsibility to their fans. And I am not a George R. R. Martin fan, I don't like how dark his works are, I don't like his seeming attitude on humanity in his works, where everybody's just awful all the time, and they're just different shades of awful. I, I don't like that kind of writing. Um, and, you know, I love the setting Warhammer 40k, and yes, it's very dark, and there's a lot of that in it, but there's there's always little elements you can draw on. And in that setting, humanity has been pushed to its absolute extremes, Whereas in George R. R. Martin, it's just, oh, this is based on the Middle Ages, and in the Middle Ages, everybody was awful to everyone, which isn't even accurate. But more than that, he hasn't completed his books, okay? So I'm not one of those people that goes, oh, I'm, I'm only going to buy your books when they're all done, because that doesn't help the author, that doesn't help get more books done. You know, I'm catching up on Brandon Sanderson's A Stormlight, Stormlight Archive, it's not done. But there's a certain level of trust where I believe Brandon Sanderson will finish his, his books. He's finished plenty of other books. He writes pretty quickly. You know, he puts out books that are incredibly long in a very comparatively short duration of time. George R. R. Martin has taken, what is it, 11 years now between books? And I just can't get, for all of those reasons, and the way he acts by calling fans assholes and by constantly bringing politics into stuff, I, I just have no interest in his work. However, I think it's an interesting case for discussing an author's responsibility with their work and to their fans. Because some people have said, well... He doesn't have to finish the book if he doesn't want to. It's his work. Well, yes and no. When you have this much support in terms of the fans have spent millions of dollars on your work, you have a responsibility to finish it. That at that point you've entered into a author reader contract of sorts where they have said we're willing to give you a whole bunch of money and support all your projects because we love what you're doing and we expect you to finish it and the author thereby needs to finish their work especially when they continue to constantly promise that they're going to finish their work see if he would come out and say look I'm just not interested anymore, I've lost the spark for writing A Song of Ice and Fire, whatever he wants to say, people wouldn't like it, but he'd be honest that way. Instead of telling people every year, oh, I'm going to finish it, I'm going to finish it, it's going to be done this year, it's going to be done this year, and then it isn't. And for his fans, I've seen a lot of frustration from them. You know, watch... Um, Nerdrotic. Gary at Nerdrotic gets very frustrated with this stuff because he's a big fan and George R. R. Martin keeps posting stuff on his blog and you're like, when are you going to finish the damn book? <laughs> right? And this latest post made yesterday, um, he's never going to finish the book. That's the answer. He's not interested. We'll go through this post and what's going on here in a minute. But the the truth of it is, for whatever reason, he just doesn't have the passion to do it anymore. You can tell because it's never what he talks about. He talks about it like anecdotally. Like, oh yeah, and I need to finish this book. Oh, hey guys, I got some more chapters in. Well, that's great, but you, you write like thousand page books. You know, um, I think his his fans absolutely have every right to be angry because he has promised them repeatedly this book's going to be done, 
and not that long ago promised to have it done within a specific time frame didn't and called people assholes when they asked about it you know you can't promise your readership that you're going to do something and then not do it if you don't they have every right to be angry Especially when they see, you know, because it's not just, now, at this point, it's not just that it's taking a long time. It's that it's taking a long time and he doesn't seem to care about it. And let's go through this. So he's currently working on, he says, the story about the adaptation of In the Lost Lands broke a week or so back. And now hard on the heels of that comes the announcement about another story of mine being developed as a movie. Sand Kings was a story I was best known for, for before Song of Ice and Fire came along. Originally published on, in Omni, it went, it went on to win the Hugo, ne Nebula, and Locus Awards. And has been anthologized and reprinted more times than I can count. It was filmed once before as well as the two-hour premiere episode of the revived Outer Limits. Melinda Snodgrass did the adaptation. Boy Bridges did starred with his father and his son in supporting roles. Now the story is in development once again, this time as a feature film rather than a television episode. Gore Verbinski, the acclaimed director of Rango, The Ring, Pirates of the Caribbean, and many other films will helm the project. Dennis Kelly, creator of Utopia, is writing the script, which promises to be closer adaptation than the Outer Limits version. The new version will have a much bigger budget as well. The Outer Limits simply did not have the mind to do all the things they wanted to do. You can read all the details here, not interested. We are still in the early stages of development, to be sure. Dennis Kelly is only now writing the script. Many things are developed, and only a few are ever filmed, so please remember that. It could be a year or two or three before it comes to Netflix, if it ever does. But we have a great team on it, so I am hopeful. I am not quite sure why all these stories have seem to be breaking now. You're really unaware of things, aren't you, George? Okay. Uh, the Sand Kings project has been underway for more than a year, and in Lost Lands for in the Lost Lands for something like six years. We have also we also have an animated feature, The Ice Dragon, in development at Warner's. And that's just in the feature sphere. In television, as seen here, I am working with Glinda Vasquez. See the key to all of this is I am working with, we are working on, I am part of a team. He's involved in every one of these projects. None of them just has his name on it. Okay. I am part of the terrific team that is trying to bring Nindy Okaf... I'm, I'm sorry, I don't know how to pronounce that name. Or Korafors, who fears death to a series on HBO. I think we're finally getting close on that one. We've been interviewing possible directors lately, and the last one was very impressive. Of course, there's House of the Dragon at HBO, Game of Thrones prequel series that Ryan and Miguel are helming, and maybe possibly some other stuff for HBO I can't tell you about. And also a new series for AMC that I also cannot tell you about. You ever want to just beat your head against a wall? Oh, and there's Friends Forever. Just a short film, maybe 20 minutes long. A labor of love that I hope you'll love as much as I do. That one will happen if the pandemic ever allows it. If not for COVID, we... Shut up about COVID. Jesus. It's the first of four shorts that I hope to film based on classic short stories by the most idiosyncratic writers our field has ever produced. That's what's on my plate in television and film. You all know what is on my plate in prose. I need to finish wins. No kidding. And then maybe write another Duncan Egg novella. So, the man has taken 11 years to write this book. It's still not done. And when he's done, instead of going into the final book of the series, he's going to write a frickin' novella nobody cares about. And then he's going to get into Dream of Springs. Oh, and he's going to edit some books. The placement of this is critical. Okay? 
it's at the end. That means he doesn't care about it as much as the rest of what he's talking about. And it's it's not that an author can't be involved in other things. It's just the reality of the situation he's in that he doesn't seem to accept and that his fans are increasingly rejecting. The man's in his 70s. He's very overweight. He does not look or act healthy. And it has taken 11 years to write Winds of Winter. Now let's assume, for ease of math, that he finishes it now. And then, based on previous history, it takes him 11 years to write A Dream of Spring. Let me get my math right on his age. Seventy-two. That would put him at eighty-two years old. Now his physical health aside, people slow down in their eighties and their late seventies. The odds of him being faster on this book are non-existent. The odds of him being alive may not be very good. Because, again, his health is not good. And I think what a lot of his fans are so upset about, and what I am as an author, or, or an aspiring author, am upset about, is that he doesn't seem to care. He's got his millions of dollars, and now he'd like to dabble in some television, and he'd like to dabble in some movies, and he'd like to dabble in some animated shorts. George, repay the people who got you here. You have to understand, I'm not saying he should not do any of these projects. I'm saying he needs to take a step back. Okay, he's deeply involved in almost all of these. Some of them very deeply involved. And I'm not even going to go through the list, but there's like seven projects on here, right? George, you're 72 years old. That's a lot of workload to put on yourself and then expect to be creative enough and energetic enough to also work on a major novel. Authors are in an interesting place, okay? They're not beholden in the sense of they have to complete anything they start. Sometimes it doesn't work. But when you are several books into a series and that series has made you a multimillionaire, you owe it to your fans to finish the books. And to act like you care about finishing the books. This is cheeky crap. Putting it at the end, and you all know what is on my plate. I need to finish the wins, and then maybe write another. Come on, man. Treat your fans with some respect. This is disrespectful. Finish the book. Work on these projects, but tell everybody involved in the projects, look, I'm going to take a step back. I need to finish this book. Send me the major updates and any major questions you have, but I trust the people I've put into place to carry out my vision while I'm gone working on this book. And then finish the book. You're talking about maybe a year off from all these projects, and many of these projects have been in development for at least a year. So, you can afford to do it. Trust the people around you. Take a step back and finish the book. As authors, authors have this responsibility. Because once you are made successful by your fans, they have paid you 
for making your work, but now you need to repay their investment when you have an unfinished series. It's different if you have a finished series and you just haven't started another book yet. Okay, or if you have a finished series and you've started another book but you're working on some other stuff. This is an unfinished series that is very deep into the series that has people deeply invested into it for millions and millions of dollars. It would be like to use another author who is in a similar situation but is actually finishing his work and isn't 72, Brandon Sanderson. If Brandon Sanderson suddenly stopped work on the Stormlight Archives and just took like 11 years to finish his next book, his fans would have every right to be upset. Because he has gotten them invested into it. He has brought in a bunch of money from it. And yeah, people don't like to think about it because they like to say, well, writing is an art. Well, yes, it is. But once you have this kind of following... A started series is a contract with your readers that you're going to finish it. Now sometimes, due to health reasons, authors don't. But that's different. This is genuine, this genuinely looks like complete disinterest. Like, I, I want to do movies and stuff, man. And then I guess I'll, I'll write something here and there. That's why people are upset. And I understand it. You know, he's violated the his end of this contract. 100%. And every time he posts stuff like this, it's more disrespectful. It's look at all this stuff I'm doing. It's so exciting. And I guess I'll finish my book at some point. You know, this frustrates me as creative because I want to be in his shoes. I'm not jealous. I just want to put in that much work that I'm able to become very successful as an author because I want to inspire people in the way other authors have inspired me. And I want to put out entertainment that is, is good, that people can read and step away from the world for a while. And to see somebody who has done that just kind of back off from it and be disrespectful about it in the process is very frustrating. And it's why I will never pick up anything this man does. Aside from the reasons I don't like his work to begin with. Because, to me, respect to your fans is everything. It's not a lot. It's not big. It's not important. It's everything. Respect to the fans is why I'm going to watch the Snyder Cut, and a movie I had no interest in. It's why I'm going to watch Godzilla vs. King Kong, a movie I have no interest in. And it's why I started reading or really listening to the audio novels of Brandon Sanderson because I see how he treats his fans and I go, you know what? Maybe I'll give it a shot. If you can't respect your fans, I don't have respect for your work or you. It's, it's that simple. And to me, this is incredibly disrespectful. The way this, the end of this is written, the way he has acted over the last couple of years. It's, it's very unfortunate. I feel sorry for the fans. I'm sorry. If you're a George R. R. Martin fan, I don't think you're going to get these books. You may get Wins and Winter, maybe. You will not get a dream of spring. He's too busy doing other stuff. He doesn't care anymore. And even if he did, he's so slow. At this point, the man's 72 and he acts like he's 30. Okay, look, if it takes you another 10 years, even if it takes you another 5, you could slow down dramatically or have health problems.
I just don't think it's going to happen. And I hope, if you're a George R. R. Martin fan, that it does. I hope that I am wrong, and I hope that he gets off of this stuff and says, you know what, I have a duty to finish these books for my fans, because they're the ones that put me in the position to do all this in the first place. So if you are a fan of George R. R. Martin, let me know. Let me know how you feel about all this in the comments. Um, I'm, I'm very interested in that. And let me know if you think you're going to get the book. And if you liked the video, hit the like button. If you're not subscribed, please consider subscribing. Hit the bell for notifications. And I will see you next time.